All right, so we're gonna go over um, a first initial pass into mount when he bridges me over, and we're going to the adjustment I made mid-match to uh, actually put him uh, into a mounted position and isolate his arm, uh, as well as the, uh, the the knee tap that I hit two times. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is she's gonna be down in a mounted position. Okay, I had upper body inside position uh, on the first pass. She had, uh, I had lower body inside position as well. I passed into a mounted position. Now, as I passed, he went to go roll. As he rolled, this elbow came across the center line. So he rolled me towards the side, exactly, of, uh, of the trapped arm. And as we fell over, we ended up in this position. Right. Now, I'm going to side to the position. What I want to do is have to climb to his back and do things like that. But um, if you ever notice in my matches, I start off relatively low paced. And then as the match goes on, I pick up the pace. I don't, I don't start uh, you know, very aggressive and blow my load and get exhausted in the first few minutes. I usually get, uh, I usually get faster pace as we go. So I wasn't really too concerned about losing this. Um, what I want to start doing was climbing up and either moving to a full figure four top block, like so, or moving to his back. And as I went to go adjust my hips, he just pulled everything out, uh, just to raise your hips up high. Hips up high. Good. And now just pull everything straight out, and he managed to get completely out of the way. So I naturally set up. I went to go start heisting and playing, uh, playing a game where I was going to stand up. And because he didn't engage towards me, he wasn't putting pressure on me, he just stood up with me. And then immediately I came through, punched the underhook in, and now I started going in for my knee taps. So usually when I go into knee taps, I start pulling someone's near, uh, near leg towards me. I start walking towards the far leg. So I start playing this game here. So now I have my feet in front of my partners. From this position, now I just shoot my hand to the far shoulder. I run across my partner's body. I take a step across my partner's body, and I just run in this direction and block my partner's far knee. Okay? Most of the time, as you do this, you land either in side control, half guard, you land in a very good chest-to-chest uh, -chest position because you started with an underhook. So I tap, and I just run across, run across, and we fall chest-to-chest. -chest. Okay? That's the first transition. The second transition is when we go into mount. This time, we make a couple adjustments. Instead of having... Uh, most of the inside position at the upper body, I completely dominate the upper body inside position. Previously, he had a hand inside, like so. This time, he doesn't have a hand inside. So I completely dominate the inside real estate. He does a good job of delaying me with the hand underneath my leg. So I can't pummel a butterfly hook in, but he's just really delaying me. Now we could, of course, start to come in and go to Oshiro Senkaku, but I was afraid of him starting to bring his knees to his chest to invert and start exactly getting out like so. So I chose, I made the decision to start going from here, uh, instead of going into Shiro Senkaku, to just simply go back to a cross face, elongate his body, and start to pass from here. Remember, whenever someone goes to invert, the head has to come towards the knees and the knees have to come up towards the chin. If you elongate your partner's body, you effectively kill the inversion, okay? So we were playing this game, he was just delaying me with his hand, and eventually the hand came out, and I got to lower body inside position. Now, when I went to pass, notice, there's something very important that happens, the adjustment that I made. I bring this leg out, I think I went to two knees on the same side at first, and then I went across in this direction. As I went to pass, he gave a strong bridge, nope, out to the side of the trapped arm, and I turned my hips like so. Look, look, look at what, what this does. If, for whatever reason, he, just hold the bridge out to the side, okay? he bridges like so, even if he frees this elbow, this elbow comes out, just turn to your side, like you're bridging. When he tries to go to knee elbow escape, there's no knee to access. If he tries to push on my knee, it just easily allows me to control my partner's elbow, lift the elbow, and then, just like in the passing instructional, talk about that ever so important inside knee position relative to my partner's elbow. So if he, if he was to post to my knee and he freed the arm, 
simple lift of the elbow and a gathering of the inside knee position would solidify the, uh, solidify the mount for me. But because my elbow was high up towards my partner's shoulder line, he couldn't free the hand. In addition, as he went to bridge, I set my right leg up and I pull my knee into my chest behind his hips like so. So now as he goes to bridge, it's very difficult because as he's pushing this way, I'm pulling back in this direction effectively with my left leg. When he tries to shrimp away from me, because I'm pulling my left knee to my chest, he can't move his hips at all. So the linear motion across the floor with his hips is now impossible. So as he goes to move around, he gives the initial bridge. So I go to pass him to mount, leg comes across, he has a strong bridge, and we're here. And now I settle down, and now we're into the mounted position. Then I try to walk his arm up for a kagatame. I lock my hands. He posts to my hip, gives a or in my hip or armpit, I'm not sure which one, gives a strong bridge, and then brings knees in uh, knees in right away. So he gives a strong bridge towards the nope, towards the side of the trapped arm, and then brings two knees in, and then I force him back into a half guard. That's what we covered so far. Okay? But the main thing uh, is the adjustment that I made to get into a mount the second time not getting rolled over. So initially we tried to mount, we, we got rolled over, and we're here. I tried to make an adjustment, he pulled his upper body out, get away, I set up, we both got up at the same time, I came in, I used the under, or the call tie to move his head off center, punch underhook in, and then move into a knee pick, and then immediately landed chest to chest with upper body inside position. He delayed for a few minutes with the hand inside like so, but couldn't really make anything happen with it. Notice that whenever the hand wasn't scooping my knee, I was always making sure that I dominated the inside knee position relative to his elbow. So if the hand wasn't scooping the leg, and it was in here, I always made sure that my knee was inside the elbow. If his knee was to come inside my elbow, or if his elbow was to come inside my knee, an, an, uh, an elbow escape will be incredibly easy with the knee to come in, and now my underhook becomes a liability. Clamps can come in and all, and all kinds of attacks. So notice, if he's scooped inside the leg, it's fine. Because now when he tries from the elbow escape, he can't. Okay, because he has, a, he has a scoop grip. But when that hook comes out, I'm always fighting to get it inside knee position. Okay? If necessary, if he takes an elbow inside, I'll come in here and I'll lift the elbow. So when he goes from the elbow escape, I always dominate the inside knee position relative to my partner's elbow. Okay? Now, the second pass comes in where I get my lower body inside position. So we dominate both the upper body and the lower body inside position. We pin the head and shoulders and we get our partner's feet and knees to point away from us. Now, we bring the knee to the floor. As we went to give, go give a strong bridge, we switched the hips like so. We have a wedge on both sides of the part, our partner's hips to stop a linear motion across the floor and to put a wedge behind our partner's hip to anchor us in place as she goes to give a strong bridge. So when she goes to bridge, it's ineffective. When he goes to knee elbow escape, it's ineffective. And now he can settle down. He can come in and start attacking Kagatame's. To his credit, he did give a strong bridge at the end, managed to bring his knees back inside, and now we're in this position here.